Hi folks, I'm John Flynn with Mass Street Music. I'm one of the owners here and today we're visiting with Josh Scott who is president of uh, JHS Pedals and uh, we're here to just talk about a little bit about the history, how Mass Street Music became a dealer um, and uh, just where pedals are going in general. So to start off Josh, can you tell us sort of how JHS was formed? Um, I got to where I say it was a hobby that took over my life. I say that a lot lately. Um, and in all seriousness, it was just being a guitar player, doing session work, touring work and stuff. Um, I just ran into fixing a couple things and then trying to mod a pedal. And then it was just this uh, evolution of hobby literally turning into, I uh, put a few things that I'd come up with on consignment in a local store when I lived in Mississippi. It wasn't a dealer or anything, it was just a store there. and They kept selling and uh, it just escalated. It nice. just kept, people kept wanting them. And that was kind of, that's been the theme of, mm -hmm. of how it just kind of happened. Now we were your first dealer, right? Yes, yeah. I, we were in, a, the company started in Jackson, Mississippi. That's where I was from and we, my family, we made a transition up here to uh, Kansas City, and we had a, a couple guys in the Mississippi area who I would take some and drop them off, but there was no dealer relationship, and it was kind of weird, and I, it was all direct sales. And then when I uh, moved to Kansas City, a friend that I'd met here was kind of telling me about Mass Street, and I had this vision for uh, JHS pedals and what the dealers would look like, and I really wanted... Um, personal real people that understood gear um and i remember walking in and it was like the perfect scenario so and that was in 09 sometime i'm horrible with dates but yeah I walked in i remember demoing up in the the amp room there and uh master was the first dealer and so now we're you know a few years later and we're up in the hundreds you know and so international distribution and all those things but it did it definitely started here so that's really cool Great. Super cool for us. What do you think about, um, you know, I've been around long enough to see this evolution of from the 70s and somewhat in the 80s where it was basically guitar, cable, amp, to the 90s where, of course, I had the rack unit, oh, yeah. I had the whole thing, and that was actually kind of fun. But yeah. I've come around full circle like almost everybody has where now it's not just one or two pedals on the floor, but pedals are an, an obsession. And that's been going on for about 10 years now, and instead of it kind of cycling out and somehow going back to, heaven forbid, rack mount, um, you know, it's going stronger and yeah. stronger. Uh, do you have any, first of all, it's got to be good news for you guys. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, that I'm a, I'm a child of the 90s. I, I cut my teeth on Seattle grunge music and stuff, you know, so I, you know, I, I think those, those guys, you're lucky if you saw three pedals, you yeah. know, maybe. Um, and then by the time I really got into playing and effects, you just didn't see guys. If you had over like four or five pedals, you were kind of like freakish. How has that evolution happened? I, I think I think it's just the guitarist wanting to not sound like a guitarist to some extent. I think with a lot of the 90s music, like Radiohead and those guys, yeah. real innovators in what a guitar can sound like. Um, and then just evolving into just the different styles of music. Yeah, I think there's probably a hundred reasons, but it is interesting. And the market, um, I don't know, maybe some of what I chop it up to is uh, as the economy has gone through shifts, it's easier for a guy to buy a $300 pedal than right. a $5,000 amp. And maybe, and you'd know more about that than me, but that I feel like that has some dynamic in, in the game, you know, the why the pedal companies are doing well. One thing I have a question about is, um, why you guys don't label anywhere on here what they are uh, yeah and that's just a convenience factor mostly for me because i'll come up and somebody will say what is this that's a honey dew dripper yeah what yeah is what is it like yeah uh, is there a reason for that or is it just strictly we feel uh it's just not necessary i would love to say there was some deep plan in that but it was really um uh, what's the saying? Necessity is the mother of invention, or something like that. We, when I when I first started the company um, and realized I'm going to go for this, which was around the time you guys became a dealer. I remember the commitment was going all the way. You know, so I'm mm -hmm. going to do full time. 
jumped in and uh, I was labeling pedals any way I could and I, there wasn't a consistency that I really struggled with how to how to I wasn't going to screen print you know because I'm hand making everything and that was like an, an, a cost that was kind of out of the picture and I remember just struggling how do I deal with it and I just came up with the idea to stamp them which I didn't realize there was I think there was one other company that had possibly done that but at the time I don't know that anybody had quite done it. Um, that was just all I had to do. I couldn't do anything else. And so what was funny is it just created this look, you know, the super clean. It's really clean and recognizable. And it got to, we we had discussions, you know, a year or so ago, how you'll see an artist's board on a, on a tour stage and you see and know that pedal. 